Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So in this video I want to talk about the changes that are coming to the core rules of Age of Sigmar and so far we have had two different articles. The first one is about the turn priority and the changes that are coming to that and the second one is the command abilities and the new command point system. I've had lots of you saying hey when are you going to talk about these and okay I'll do it now but to be honest we've also had some of the faction focus changes and I haven't really talked about those and I'll do that in a separate video because I think we've got plenty to talk about here in one video and I've watched quite a few other channels do discussions of rules and new additions and codexes and battle tomes. I think if they're too long they have the potential to become quite boring so I'm going to keep this short sharp and snappy or at least I'm going to try to. Knowing me I will probably completely fail and go on a massive rant and end up recording this again but fingers crossed for this version of the video. So the turn phase is changing in Age of Sigmar and and if you know anything about the game at the moment, all four pages of the rules, then you will know that it is divided into battle rounds and each of those battle rounds is divided into player turns. And basically at the start of every battle round you roll a dice to see who goes first. So say I was playing someone, I roll a dice and damn it I get a one, that's useless, so the other guy gets a six, he decides he's going to go first. But then in the second battle round, after we've both had our turns, this time I I get the 6 and he gets a 2 so now I get to choose whether I go first and that means because I went second in the first battle round and first in the second battle round that means I effectively have two turns in a row. It's kind of a controversial system but then at the same time it's extremely fun and you have to play the game I think to appreciate that fact. I guess if you're super competitive it might annoy you somewhat whereas for me where I'm kind of more in it for the fun and the enjoyment and I don't really care if I lose then I really like the system. If I lose because of a double turn it's a bit like okay well there's a reason for the fact I lost so I don't have to get too um, annoyed about it. Let's stick with a friendly term for it. It's actually very tense when both of you do the roll-offs at the start of each battle round, but what they've proposed to change it to now is that if you get a draw, then that counts as an automatic win for whoever went first in the previous battle round. It actually sounds like a really simple change that doesn't make a big difference, but believe me it does because I was playing a game of Age of Sigmar yesterday and I used these new second edition rules and it came into play like literally the first game I played. I was teaching two guys how to play and one of them was a bit more experienced and he was using the Daughters of Cain. I was basically helping the guy who was less experienced and he was using Stormcast. It was 500 points aside so it was a nice and small little battle to introduce them to the rules and everything. But the guy playing the Daughters of Cain won the first roll off so he went first and then me and the guy playing Stormcast went second and then we did the roll off for the second battle round and it was a draw. That immediately by default meant that the guy who was playing Daughters of Cain had his turn. It prevented the chance of having a double turn for me and the Stormcast guy and for some reason it was just very smooth, very intuitive and I really liked it. It seems small but I think it will actually make a big difference. I haven't bothered to do the maths on how much it decreases the chance of having a double turn but I think it's going to be significant enough to make quite a big difference. Like I mean the first game I've played since seeing this rule and it immediately came into effect for the better as well. I like the the idea of double turns but I think they should be kind of a rarity like less common than just a 50 50 chance of it happening every single battle round. It's very simple but I absolutely love it. The second changes that come into effect are much more substantial because we now have a command point system and I absolutely love the changes to command abilities that are coming out and it's something that's bugged me for a very long time. Basically if you look at loads of war scrolls like say you've got a Lord Celestin or maybe you've also got Vander's Hammerhand or you want to take a Lord or Dinata, you will notice that you have a command ability on all of their war scrolls okay. If you look at the rules Basically, it's only your general that can use a command ability, and that's in the hero phase. So, say I take Vander's Hammerhand and I use him as my general, but I'm also taking the Lord Ordinata and the Lord Celestin on foot, that means I can't use either of their command abilities. The Lord Celestin on foot has the ability to add one to hit rolls for a unit within nine inches, in fact, for any units within nine inches. The Lord Ordinata lets a war machine shoot 
twice, and Vander's Hammer Hand adds one to the attack characteristics of any weapons used by Stormcast Eternals within six inches. So as the system stands at the moment, if I'm taking all three of these units in one army, I have to decide which one I want to use as the general. And because I'm more of a fluff guy, I tend to pick the most powerful person to be the general, so the obvious choice to me would be Vandus. But then I've got a trade-off of thinking, well, I need to decide who has the best command ability, therefore I might be forced to pick someone to be my general who is actually weaker. That would be more true than ever now that we've got the Celestar Ballista coming out for the Stormcast Eternals, so I would basically be forced to take a Lord Ordinata as my general, even if I had some much more appealing characters, and then I don't get to benefit from those nice attack boosts that they have as well. So as it says here, in the previous edition, some would almost never see play because they belong to models who weren't being used as generals. Here's what they've done to rectify it. In the new edition, every hero can contribute and use their command ability whether they are your general or not. But obviously that would be massively overpowered if then we're using all three of these command abilities every turn. So the way they've got around that is by introducing the command point system. Basically in order to use your command ability you have to use a command point. Now I've read a lot of people saying but hang on a minute that means command abilities are no longer free. That's stupid I hate it. It's not a good system. Why would they do that? But the good thing is is basically every single turn you generate a command point. So here we go. You receive one to add to your pool every turn and you get an additional point at the beginning of the game per war scroll battalion you've used. So say you're taking your Vander's Hammer Hand as your general, you love his command ability and you want to be able to use it every single turn, you still can because you always generate one command point. That means basically it's essentially exactly the same as it was before if you want it to be. The difference is you've now got a whole load of extra options that you can take advantage of because say Vandus is nowhere near a fight or it's not a beneficial thing to use at that exact moment whereas you really want to take advantage of your artillery in this particular turn you can basically choose whose command ability to use at any given hero phase. It's it's definitely going to add a lot of tactical variation to the armies and I don't quite know exactly how that's going to play out because obviously we've only just had this system and we haven't thoroughly play tested it but from where I'm sitting it seems like it can only be a good thing to give you more tactical options. One complaint I have heard which is kind of valid is the fact that some people are saying well you also get additional points for having war scroll battalions. Some of the older and more niche armies out there don't have war scroll battalions which means you're automatically at a disadvantage. It's not necessarily the case. I mean, I don't know if they're planning on using command points for anything other than this, but to be honest, I don't tend to use War Scroll Battalions that much anyway because they can be quite a lot of points, and for those amount of points, you can just take a whole heap more models, and I also tend to play smaller games, but yes, in a way, it does slightly penalise you if you don't have any War Scroll Battalions available to you, but it does only give you an additional point at the beginning of the game. Game. so it's not generated per turn and I'm really glad that's the case otherwise yes I think there would be an issue to have there one thing I do really like is the fact that your pool doesn't disappear every turn they carry over so you could basically save up your command points for the first three turns and then you could just suddenly use three command abilities all in one go that's pretty cool and I'm a big fan of that especially when you're right at the beginning of the game and you might not even be in combat in the first turn why bother wasting your command points if that's the case. The very last thing to talk about is the fact that there are now three new command abilities that every single army and every single general can use. So in the core rules, every single general, regardless of whether they have their own command ability or not, they could have inspiring presence. So for example, if you just took a branch witch or maybe you didn't have any kind of hero in your army at all, when you nominate your general, they will always have at least inspiring presence presence. And even if they've already got a command ability like say Vander's Hammer Hand, they get this one alongside it. So you can always choose which one they use. They have changed Inspiring Presence and they've also added two more that can be used as well. Before Inspiring Presence was pretty good because it basically meant that you could pick a unit and it wouldn't have to take battle shock tests until the end of the next hero phase. That meant that say you went first in the battle round and you used it in the hero phase 
abilities. It would last through all of your turn, then all of your opponent's turn, then if they got a double turn it would last all the way through that too. So that means potentially you could have an inspiring presence last for three turns, which could make quite a bit of difference to uh, casualties. The way it works now is you can use it at the start of the battle shock phase, but it only lasts for one battle shock phase. Personally, I think that is better. It makes more sense and it's interesting to have a command ability that can be used outside of the hero phase as well. But now we've also got at the double and forward to victory. At the double is probably one of my favorite command abilities they've added. Say you're using iron jaws and you really want to run like a unit of brutes up the board quite quickly. I think their movement characteristic is four inches, which is really slow. Say it's the movement phase, you decide you're gonna run them and you roll a one. That means in the first turn they're going to move a fairly measly 5 inches. Basically what this does is after you've made that roll and you've decided you're not happy with it, if you choose to, you can treat that roll as a 6 instead, which means all of a sudden your brutes have doubled how far they can move. The thing I really like about that is it basically means that if you're a slow moving army and you really want to rush them up the board quite quickly, you can use that first phase to move them a lot quicker. And as it says down below, there's quite a lot of units that can run and charge and also run and shoot. So we've got Beast of Gauls that can run and charge and we've got Namati reavers that can run and shoot whereas if we look at the core rules at the moment a unit that runs can't shoot or charge later in that turn so there's a lot of tactical options for units that can take advantage of this particular command ability. The last one we've got is forward to victory and this one basically lets you re-roll a charge roll if you're not happy with it and speaking of stormcast this would be exceptionally good for them because they have the sounds of the storm allegiance ability which means you can basically deep strike them onto the battlefield but they have to be nine inches away from an enemy and if you're looking at a unit like say your retributors you really need to get them into combat as quickly as possible because otherwise they can be killed before they get there you need to get that charge off but if they've appeared nine inches away it's quite a difficult charge to pull off so having the ability to re-roll a charge can mean that you're more likely to get off a difficult charge but it also just means say you've got a charge you really want to uh, be successful you can just re-roll that if you failed as well so yeah basically I really like this new system I like the fact that it encourages you to take more champions and heroes because I always love the characters and the heroes they're what kind of makes the storyline more interesting and it makes sense that you're going to be able to have these heroes kind of inspire the units around them and make them do feats of exceptional bravery or whatever it might be. And I guess what these changes so far are making the game feel more like is that you are a general with a tactical toolbox. So whilst you're playing there are just more options that you can take advantage of. Basically all of the heroes in the game have just got infinitely more better and all of the generals now have a choice of probably four command abilities which is a very cool thing to be honest. I've heard a few more people mentioning stuff about power creep and abusing stuff and I think we have to actually play the game to wait and see how this is going to turn out before we make those judgments but anyway I'm going to leave this video here because I don't want it to become too long. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for your support recently and for all of the people on Patreon who've been supporting me. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and hit the little bell icon so that you know when my videos come out. Also, leave me a comment down below so I know what your thoughts are on this particular set of rule changes. And otherwise, I will see you really soon.